whole concept of a world federation as a as a world movement, you probably know, um, came out of the First World War, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom d during the First World War. They they said, now what is the real cause of the cause of these wars? You know, what, I mean, this and the whole world is slaughtering each other, and they realized that. It, this idea of sovereign nations, or militarized sovereign nations having no law above themselves was fundamental to what was happening in the world, First World War. And of course, the, intellectually, the idea goes way back to the ancient Greek Stoics and so on, but, but uh, um, it became a movement then, and it was pretty strong between the wars as a world, world government movement, and then again after the um, Second World War. Albert Camus wrote neither victims nor executioners and uh, in that he says we need a world parliament. He says you know this is this system of victims and executioners is absurd. We need uh, world authority. Um, and then there was a big conference in Montreux, Switzerland called the Montreux, Montreux Conference in 1950 and I think 500 people were there. I mean, it was really a lot of world federalists. That was probably the high point of world federalism. And and uh, but the Monroe the Monroe Monroe Conference uh, didn't result in unity. There was like three directions that they went in. Uh, one group said. The UN Charter, when the UN had just been started a few, five years earlier, the UN Charter has great potential, uh, but it's inadequate. It, uh, it's not a government, and we need to work on reforming the UN. So they went to reform it. Here we are, all this time later, and it has not been reformed yet. Right? And uh, they have failed substantially. Uh, another group. Uh, said we need to start with regional unions and we'll, and they started working on the European Union and they were quite successful you know uh, 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 and then the third group said no what we really need is a constitution for the for the earth and and uh, uh, some of the people that eventually became WCPA were in that third group they and uh, one of the one of the people who had been in prison during the Second World War uh, because he refused to, he, he said, this is a war of sovereign militarized nations. It's not good versus evil. And, we, and uh, um, he refused to go in, so he was in prison. It was Philip Isley. And uh, so he, he and others uh, became... Uh, uh, organized uh, through the world government offices that were already there in the United States, but in 1958 they announced a new uh, organization uh, called the World Constitution and Parliament Association, and their goal was to write a constitution. They said, this is what the world needs, it hasn't been done yet. And so he used his considerable money he had um, he and his wife uh, organized people around the world, and they uh, had four constituent assemblies. One in 1968, the first one, um, in, uh, in uh, Interlaken, Switzerland. And then out of that, you know, the, the couple hundred people that came together there uh, issued a... Uh, they elected a drafting committee of 25 persons and issued a, a, a series of things that needed to be included in the Constitution. So that, that drafting committee worked on it. Uh, they came out with a draft in 1972 and circulated it worldwide and uh, for comments and so on. And then 1977 they had the, what's now called the Second Constituent Assembly. That was in, in Innsbruck, Austria. And people came together and they had a draft of the Constitution. They went over it paragraph by paragraph, and people 
they were in tears at the end of that. I wasn't there. Uh, I, uh, I didn't know about this movement at that time, but but uh, you know they they said we we have done something incredible for the world. Sent out copies of this to all the nation heads of nations, all the ambassadors in the United Nations, and they did not get any positive response. Right? And so they met again with what we call the third constituent assembly in Troy, in uh, uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka, 1979, uh, and uh, discussed the issue and so on, and they came out with a statement there about the rights of people to ratify this Earth Constitution regardless of whether the nations cooperated. Right? And, and in Article 17 of the Constitution, there's that option. Uh, people can vote directly and uh, elect uh, the World Parliament and so on and get the thing going and even if the nations are not cooperative. And in 1991, uh, there, was, there had been between 79 and 91, there was some additional criticisms from the group that had written it about wording, small things about wording and so on. Uh, and so in 1991, they met in Troya, Portugal, and we call it the fourth and last constituent assembly. And in Troya, Portugal, they decided, they made some changes, and they decided, okay, it's a finished document. It's ready for the people of Earth to ratify. And I think that's, that was a wise decision, because if, if it's just a suggestion, a draft, you know, and we're offering it to you, there'll be endless debates about wording, about this idea and that idea. And the world, in, in our view, the world is in such a mess, and, and even they even understood it back in 1991, right? The world is th so threatened with even possible extinction of human beings with nuclear war or whatever that we really don't have time to debate this little sentence or that sentence. Uh, the Constitution makes ample provision for amendments in fact, it's, built, it's, a, it's an evolving document. It's built right into it. And Article 18 is the requirement that once it gets started, they have to hold another constituent assembly within 10 years and every 20 years after that. And, and in addition to that, there's, a, there's a facilities for making amendments in between. You know, so it's an evolving, growing document. It, it not, it's not locked in stone. And, and uh, so, in 1995, I found I had been. A, I'm a philosopher, and I had been writing about peace issues uh, for years. But I had never been satisfied with all the things that I've been, you know, thinking about. How are we going to deal with this human situation that we're in? And uh, when I discovered this in '95, it came as a kind of a revelation to me. Uh, you know, yes, we, you know, this is what we need to do as human beings: join together and uh, uh, deal with all these global problems in a real, effective way. Uh, and uh, so I worked with them. Uh, uh, soon, I was on the executive council and so on, and we were traveling around uh, promoting the constitution holding sessions of the parliament against odds because there are forces or there were, have been forces be, uh, uh, behind the scenes preventing us from being successful. I could give you one example. Um, there are others, but uh, um, in 2001 we uh, contacted the government of Malta and they offered to hold the, uh, uh, a session of the Provisional World Parliament. Under the Constitution, we are holding sessions of the Provisional World Parliament. Under Article 19, one of the great things about this Constitution is, in Article 17, it gives the steps for ratification. But in Article 19, it recognizes that we, the people of Earth, have the right and the duty to start it now. I mean, what are we waiting for? You know, it's, uh, you know, the world is such a mess. 
And uh, so, so the fifth session of the Provisional World Parliament was scheduled for Malta. And the government of Malta warmly embraced us and we reserved big hotels there. And at that time, the Secretary General and his wife ha had a lot of money and they, we had like, uh, and with that money you can organize big time, right? And uh, um, so they had like four to five hundred people who wanted to come as delegates to Malta and, uh, and uh, participate in the fifth session of the Provisional World Parliament. Uh, the headquarters was in Denver, Colorado at that time. And uh, we sent uh, two of our employees from Denver six weeks ahead of time to work with the government of Malta in processing all these visa applications. It was most, most of the people were from Africa and such places and they needed visas to come to Malta. Um, and uh, so they're working and the government assigned someone to cooperate with us and so they're working with us and all the applications are coming in the information, you know, the, the net, you know, there's things that are required, everything is, and they're laying it out, and the government is not approving these. It, it said to our, our uh, people there, uh, we'll approve it all at once, but let's get it all organized first. So it gets to be three weeks before, two weeks before, one week before, and we're getting in, we're saying, okay, it's time, you know, approve these. Two days before it was scheduled to start, the government of Malta denied them all. Denied them all. And so when it, it happened, there were about 35 people who didn't need visas, like I didn't need one and people from Europe didn't need one. So there were about 35 people who showed up there. And the big hotels that we had reserved were outraged, you know. They said, you know, we're, you know, you, you told us there would be hundreds of people and, and they had reserved space for them, so. And this, this is one example. Now, the government of Malta obviously was setting a trap for us, right, and, and uh, betrayed us. And, but behind that, we don't think Malta cares one way or the other. We think the you know, United States is behind much of this, you know. That when the U.S. Embassy finds out about what we're doing, you know, they, you know, they tell these little governments, uh-uh, we're not, we're not going to. So, so anyway, uh, um, Philip Isley is now deceased and his family is not interested. Uh, so, I became Secretary General in 2003 at a meeting in Bangkok, uh, Thailand, and then when the then President passed away, Terence Amar Singhi, um, in 2008 I became President. And uh, I told them, I don't have a lot of money, I'm only a professor, right? And they said, uh, nevertheless, you, you write about this all the time and so on. and so. So uh, since 2003, we've had money problems, but uh, we've been, you know, we've been growing, and and uh, in the last couple of years, quite rapidly, because people are getting worried. You know, they're aware of climate collapse now, and, and so on, and they're they're seeing this as a kind of uh, uh, escape route from a world that is locked into. Uh, Poor countries are locked into their poverty. Rich countries are locked into their aggression and their imperialism, and and it doesn't look like there's any way out of this mess, you know. And the Earth Constitution offers a totally new way, a new way out, you know, new vision. So, so that's what we've been doing. We, we've been holding uh, now under Article 19, we can uh, we can start any aspect of the world government that the Constitution has um, now. If we have the, the personnel and the funding, we could, we could start the world executive. Um, 
we haven't done that, we could start any of the ministries, the Ministry of Education or the Ministry of the Environment. So we haven't done that uh, because we don't have the personnel and the funds, but we, we have continued to hold sessions of the Provisional World Parliament. The, wor the Provisional World Parliament, first session of it was in 1982 in Brighton, England. Second session was in New Delhi, and it was opened by the then President of India, Sahil Singh. And he said, you know, he, he said in his opening statement, this is what the world needs. You know? And uh, it was presided over by the uh, Speaker of the Lok Sabha, the lower house in, in India. Um, so we've had very successful parliaments, and we've had less successful. Some of them, uh, depending on the economic system in the world and the, and the you know, the fact that uh, many of our members are in poor countries, where it would like be a year's salary for them just to pay for coming to uh, to the parliament. Uh, some of them have not, you know, been well attended, and and. Uh, but the four, four, what we've developed, whether they're well attended or not, we've developed a body of quality provisional world legislation. Uh, six, some 68, 69 world legislative acts, and it's all online. And, and uh, it's not binding on the final world parliament once it's it's elected, once the people of Earth ratify the Earth Constitution. Um, but, you know, there's two things I think that are important here. One is that we're, since the Constitution really is just a set of rules by which people can make laws, it's not a set of laws basically, but a set of rules, um, what this provisional world legislation does is show people the kind of world that will come out of the Earth Constitution when people are using it as the framework to make laws for addressing world problems, environmental problems and problems of militarism and so on, human rights. And uh, so we've got this kind of model that people can look at. And, and But the second thing is when the World Parliament starts, the world is, gets worse every year, right? The climate collapses, progresses every year, uh, and uh, they're going to need all the help they can get. Right? So uh, they're going to have a body of quality lit um, law that is not binding on them, but they can, if they decide to, just approve it, approve whatever they want, and so on. So. So, in, and of course, in terms of uh, concepts, what we're doing and what we're saying to the world is we're doing it now, it's got to be done now, and you know, let's, let's look at how we can do it. We think that both rooting, being rooted in grassroots is very important, but also talking to leadership is very important, right? Both, we, we try to do both. Um, and with, with, uh, in terms of the Earth Constitution, one of the things that has been going on since uh, the first draft was finished in 1977 um, is that people in organizations and, um, and potentially even governmental bodies like cities can sign it personally. They can be signatories to it. So we have many thousands of personal signatories. And to be a personal signatory for many of us means that uh, we recognize that as world law. And it supersedes the law of any nation. Right? So the laws of the United States are s secondary to the laws of the Earth Constitution and so on. And, and uh, um, so th this is like one of the, th you know, in w th therefore by signing it, you a anyone who signs it becomes a world citizen under that constitution, right? It's, it recognizes everyone. Ultimately, once it's ratified, anyone born on the earth will be, uh, you know, a world citizen legally. And uh, so we we 
treat each other legally as world citizens under the Earth Constitution, the people that have signed it. And anyone coming to the uh, Provisional World Parliament allows for observers. We invite governments to be observers, for example. But any delegate who wants to be a voting delegate has to be a signatory of the Earth Constitution and pledge to it. So we, our last um, session of the parliament was in Kolkata, India, uh, in 2014. It was a 14th session. Uh, and, uh, and it was one that was not well attended. Right? Some of them have been quite successful, some and uh, so maybe there were 40 people and and so I decided we better not hold any more because with most of these parliaments we we have uh, done our best to publicize them and part of it is the you know the publicity is saying this is a historical event uh, the people of earth are coming together to to uh, uh, look at the earth under the earth for the of the earth constitution and how we can move forward uh, and newspapers should be picking this up and and so on and so I decided um, after uh, the 14th session we did good legislation there but it was not good publicity right and uh, so I decided we'll we'll hold conferences in the meantime and when we're sure that we can get delegates from around the world and make this a really impressive meeting, then we'll call the next one. And uh, so the next year, uh, last December in uh, Pune, India, we had a, uh, a conference, WCPA conference called Building the World Parliament Conference. And it was well attended, uh, it was dynamic it was really a powerful conference and, and we're working to have another one in the Delhi area uh, this coming December and, uh, and, ag and again this the, I think these these conferences are important they're meetings of WCPA but they're not parliaments right? Parliament you don't present papers about uh, how to build a world parliament uh, we we actually consider the world legislative proposals so on. so you know that's what we're doing uh, Francois where we've got um, another initiative we've got is the uh, initiative for the Collegium of World Judges uh, under the Constitution uh, the World Supreme Court system, which has uh, eight benches of the World Supreme Court, uh, there these uh, the justices for these benches come from a collegium of world judges, so sixty judges who are highly qualified and so on. And uh, so, what we've done in the last few years is. Uh, we often meet people in high court judges. Um, you may know in in uh, Lucknow, India, uh, the City Montessori School of Lucknow, under uh, its leader Jagdish Gandhi, holds an annual conference of chief justices of the world. And we've always had. He's now on 17th annual one, and so on. And we've now. Um, we've always had representatives there and we we go there and we talk to the justices and, and invite them to be members of the collegium of world justices so we have a, maybe a dozen around the world now who are members of it and uh, when we get enough and they they begin um, organizing themselves and leading themselves and we encourage them to you know um, become an independent body uh, and once we get enough of these justices we'll, we'll draw from them to start the first bench of the world supreme court system we don't need to have the constitution approved it, you know we can we'll just set up a bench and right now you know even though there are many courts in the world 
uh, the two in The Hague, right, uh, ICC and ICJ, and then the court in Latin America with the uh, Organization of American States and various courts, none of them are truly universal courts, right? None of them have the authority of mandamus, the authority that the Earth Constitution, you know, a real court has the power to uh, indict people, has the power to demand that they come before the court, has the power to try people. The, the signatories to the Rome Statute uh, are all voluntary, right? So, so the cooperation, the ICC can't indict people without the cooperation of the nations and so 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 this is you know these are the kind of things we're trying to do we're trying to start it to the best of our resources and so right now we've got we're trying to we're raising money in India especially um, because we're going to be starting a global communication center in Delhi uh, by the end of this year and uh, um, we already have space for it. One of our distinguished advisors has given us a small one-room building in uh, downtown Delhi, uh, very central to the power in India. And uh, we're going to have um, the latest technology and experts in video streaming and uh, global communications and social media. And, we're, and this is going to be a big step forward for us. We're going to get the word out about the Earth Constitution as widely as possible. So that's where we are, right? Uh, um.